welcome to bfsi.com my name is amol dete and you're watching fintech diary i'm in conversation with jokeem from crunch fish which is a swedish tech company trying to enter in india to offer mobile payment solutions jokeem welcome on the show thank you very much i'm very happy to be here great uh, jokeem to begin with i have a very very important question Tell me something about Crunchfish, and tell me something about the fintech market of Sweden right now. Yes, uh, uh, Crunchfish is a technology company, and we develop interaction solutions for mobile payments service providers. So we're not a mobile payments play ourselves, but we enhance the interactions for the customers of the mobile payments service providers. That's what sort of Crunchfish uh, is doing. And um, we've been doing that uh, in Sweden. Uh, we are integrated with the uh, um, dominant uh, Swedish service provider here. Uh, it's um, it's uh, they call Swish. Uh, it's something that almost every Swede have. Uh, compared to India, you know, you have uh, on UPI there are sort of 120 uh, apps that can use UPI, but in in Sweden, we um, it's sort of a bank-led uh, initiative as well, but uh, it's only one uh, single app on that, uh, which is called Swish. And uh, I, I think we, we are looking at 80, 90% of the Swedish population is, is actually using it. So it's, uh, it's a really strong band. And uh, we have integrated our, uh, our technology uh, into that uh, brand in Sweden. So that, that's our position on, on the Swedish market. So we are sort of have the main app uh, covered that we are part of that. And our interest in India is to do uh, a similar type of integration with the Indian sort of uh, payment service providers. That, that's what we're looking at. You, you, what was your second question? You right. wanted to know a little bit on... Uh, Quintech space in the Sweden. Yeah. Um, the, the, the fintech space is, uh, Sweden is, is compared to India, a, a, quite a different market. Um, we are almost, we probably the most cash less market in the world. I think uh, cash in circulation is less than 1% of the gross uh, domestic product. And uh, when it comes to payments uh, in the, uh, using cash, it's sort of less than 10% of the transactions are actually using cash which compared to India, where you have com almost completely the opposite. Uh, you have, uh, I guess, more than 80% is sort of cash in India. So it's a completely different sort of uh, landscape. In Sweden, cash is not king as in India. In Sweden, cards are king. Uh, it's cards payment all over the place. And uh, uh, for physical payments, Swish is uh, growing and, and, and making an inroad there. Uh, but I, And I think we are in, a, in some sense a similar journey where uh, mobile payments are starting to pick up and, and eating into that big chunk of cash payments in India. Uh, the, the fintech space in Sweden is sort of, uh, Sweden has always been quite known for payments. I don't know if you, uh, there, there are players like iSettle, there is Klarna, uh, there, is, uh, there is quite a few, Trustly, Tink, a lot of unicorns uh, is out of the payment space out of Sweden. So we have a quite a vibrant um, uh, community here as of, of startups developing solutions for uh, the fintech space. Uh, we have decided quite early, uh, um, in some sense by chance, that after Sweden, why don't we look at India? Uh, and 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 one reason is simply is that. Uh, India, what we have understood being the fastest growing market in the world for uh, mobile payments, we, uh, we couldn't stay away. And uh, instead of going for Norway or Denmark, any of our neighboring countries as our next country, we actually uh, took a chance and, and uh, decided to go for India instead. Oh, interesting, uh, Joachim. In fact, uh, I must say it's an interesting decision and welcome to India. Uh, but uh, like you said, you know, the cash is uh, king in India. Slowly, uh, that picture is changing. Uh, and uh, lockdown, in the lockdown period, it's, you know, we have, in fact, ETPFS, I've done a couple of stories where we have projected that the cash withdrawals are way less than the car transactions and the, you know, other based UPI payments. So people are actually going through a digital payments really, really high. Uh, what I want to know, Joachim, now from you is, uh, since you already chose Indian market, uh, and you see the growing demand for the Indian market. 
how are you prepared uh, to enter into Indian market? Uh, when you say that you want to enter into the mobile payment space, what exactly are you going to do? And how are you going to deal with the competition as well? Because we have already Google Pay here, WhatsApp Pay is going to be here, and maybe in future we may have Facebook or you know uh, the Apple Pay also. So how are you going to establish yourself? We are already in dialogue with many of the, the people you are talking. We're talking to Google Pay, we're talking to, to WhatsApp, because I think the key thing to understand is that we, we're not the competitors of theirs. Uh, what we do it, with our interaction solution is that we are enabling uh, frictionless payments uh, for them. Uh, the, the, I think the paradigm right now in India is... Uh, uh, to use QR codes for the interaction uh, uh, between the, the customer and the merchant is, is sort of to use sort of uh, QR codes. Um, we, we are proposing uh, a solution which is Bluetooth based. So we, we have a Bluetooth based interaction solution which brings advantages in the point of payment which QR codes doesn't do. And I, and I think one of the most Probably the most important uh, thing we solve is that we can help uh, the Indian market with the vulnerability in the payment situation of digital failures. Because th there will be digital famous failures that all of a sudden say the shopper is not connected to the internet or possibly the merchant can't be, is not connected. We have a solution that would uh, still facilitate um, a real-time transaction even if uh, either of these parties are not uh, connected. And, and that, I think, brings uh, along stability in, in, the, uh, in the solution at the point of payment. Because I, I saw some studies last year uh, in India that the reason why people still wanted to pay with cash, I think it was something like 44% of people said, well, uh, we, we think that there is, a, there is an issue uh, that sometimes it doesn't work, so I need to bring my cash uh, to be secure that I can make, uh, to, to be secure that I can make my payments. And, and, and I think that is the problem that we are addressing. And that is of interest to uh, any of your uh, Paytm, Phone P, Google Pay, uh, MobiQuick, uh, any of them. And, and, and it's actually also of interest to NPCI, the, the hub of all the payments that are coordinating the things. So we, we are in, in dialogue uh, with payment service providers directly, but we're also in dialogue with NPCI for okay. bringing stability into uh, the Indian market when it comes to the point of payment. Very interesting, Joachim. Could you please uh, tell me more on the Bluetooth payments? Because it's not uh, that in India yet. Obviously, we started with OTP payments, one-time password the email uh, verification, and also with the now QR code and barcode. But uh, Bluetooth payment still sounds new to us. Uh, uh, could you please explain how will it work? Uh, what kind of facilities will it provide to the customers? And uh, you know how important that segment is? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, again, uh, I, I think sort of uh, you, you, you can look at our solution as a uh, um, it, it's the equivalent of using QR codes. But, but what's interesting as well that if you, you could still use QR code if you want to, to uh, initiate the, the payment, but you can use our Bluetooth as a backbone in order to secure an additional connectivity. So if, say, the customer in the shop do not have connection to his uh, uh, payment service provider, we can facilitate that link by proxy via the merchant that might sit with that connection. Or alternatively, if the merchant is connected, we, we can facilitate that connection by proxy via the shopper. That, so so uh, the, the Bluetooth that we've come with, uh, it could be used as a, uh, uh, a security that if one is not connected, the other you you will be able to do a transaction through the other. That is one thing. But but also, we could also potentially do away with the QR codes altogether. That instead of scanning a QR code, you are just like you do when you can blip your phone at an at a car terminal. You could blip basically your phone at uh, one of our Bluetooth terminals that we call a, a blippy terminal. So yeah. we, we can do it entirely away with the whole behavior of QR codes if you want to. But I think 
if you want to stay with the, uh, the behavior of using uh, QR codes in order to initiate a transaction, that can still stay, but, but you need that additional level of security in case you don't have, uh, you don't, in case one of them have uh, connectivity. What's also interesting uh, is that we have a solution as well for the case that neither have connectivity. So if, if you think of uh, digital payments to date always relies on that you go to the cloud and you look at some sort of bank account and you see is there sufficient funds on that bank account or if you have credit, if you do have sufficient credit limit to, uh, to make that payment. But it's always something you look in the cloud. You, you, you go to the cloud and, and we have devised a solution that what if you can have that credit limit sitting locally on the mobile app instead. Okay. It, 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 so you, you check on that instead. But we, because the beauty here is that we could facilitate basically then that a transaction happens even if neither the customer nor the merchant has online co connection. And then whenever they get the online connection later, then we will flush through those uh, those transactions. You can almost look at it as what happens on an airplane when you pay with credit cards. Then there is no yeah. connectivity there, and, and that is still recorded, and, and you will be sort of, uh, all the settlement will happen later. We, we see that an opportunity here that we can facilitate that uh, in the entire market, and, and that opens up even more possibilities if you uh, set up a system like that. So Crunchfish, I think our interaction solution for the Indian market is very much about uh, providing a, a level of uh, robustness in, in, onto the uh, point of uh, payment. When you're paying that, it should always work uh, regardless of your internet connection. I think that is our main value proposition to the Indian market. Thanks, uh, Joachim. That was uh, very helpful uh, to, for me to understand uh, how the Bluetooth payment will work. And in fact, if it's uh, you know uh, online less, uh, or in fact uh, it can work uh, without network because that is a big issue right now since everybody is working under the lockdown. Uh, the most important question everybody has is, oh, am I audible? Are you there in the network area? I think uh, these questions are very very important right now. And if you are entering in a payment which is Bluetooth, I think this will be a, a different aspect altogether. Uh, but you, like you can you, you can always yeah. uh, you can always think of that i think you have areas in india who don't even have mobile coverage yet yes. with our yes. our solution we we could facilitate that you can start up setting up basically payments in such an area uh even if uh, because we don't need connectivity at all so Absolutely. even in area without coverage it's possible to uh, start sort of using this type of uh, payment scenario yes joking by face value it looks really interesting uh, can you also tell me what are the other exciting solution innovations that can help address India's key challenges in mobile payment? I, I, I think an, an, an additional thing that I think that the Bluetooth solution is, is sort of helping with here is that using a QR code and, and uh, it typically using a dynamic QR code, when you are scanning that QR code, the amount to be paid is already known. And when you're scanning that QR code, at that point, you are identifying yourself to the system but you are in the payment phase so already the amount is set and you are scanning that qr code with with our our technology here of coming with a bluetooth technology we we facilitate a much earlier identification to the merchant of who you are and what that opens up is that the merchant could give you personalized sales. Uh, you can take into consideration any loyalty programs, any coupons that you might sit with on your phone. All that could be uh, addressed and uh, considered, uh, lowering the amount possibly before you go into actually the payment phase. So th th there is this aspects uh, of uh, identifying you earlier to the merchant, which is, I think is an important thing. And uh, as I talked later on, on the stability issue that we are bringing. Okay, uh, thanks for that information, Joachim. But I have a very important uh, uh, question uh, related to payments because security is one of the integral part of all the payments. And now when you're talking about the Bluetooth payments, my question to you is how secure the Bluetooth payments are? Yeah, um, uh, we, we, we're not, we, we are, uh, as we discussed, uh, we, we, we're going to have, 
uh, if we have this uh, payment by proxy that you're paying with, through the other part, the, through the party that has a connection to online, right. um, the, the, the level of security is the same as uh, NPCI is using with the UPI today. It's sort of, we're using uh, state of the art standard uh, private key infrastructure encryption. So we, we, we it, you, you can look at it that we, we are using VPN tunnels. Uh, which is an old technology for uh, transferring information end to end between two parties. What you need to connect is that if, say, the customer doesn't have connection to the customer PSP, we need to set up that connection um, tunneling basically uh, end to end. Uh, but we will go from the customer to the merchant and then via UPI over to uh, over the UPI uh, protocol over to that customer PSP. But it's a it's a standard type of uh, uh, standard type of uh, uh, PK, PKI uh, encryption paradigm. In the case full offline, where neither has a connection, then our system is built with what we call a, a virtual secure element. Because then you have to have uh, private keys sitting on the uh, actual uh, client side, on the app side. So our solution then is reliant on the same level of security, but the, uh, the private keys needs to reside securely uh, on the app side. So that's how we solve it there. But after that, it's just, again, uh, a, a, a virtual tunnel between the uh, merchant app and the, uh, and the customer app. Jokim, do you think contactless mobile payments uh, will become the new normal in post-COVID world? Absolutely. I, I, I think we, I don't know if you're aware, but Sweden has stayed actually quite open. We, ha we didn't go into quarantine at all. And uh, okay. we, we, we did a webinar yesterday uh, where we had, uh, we had people from MPCI, we had people from MobiQuick, uh, as well as Swish, the leading sort of payment service provider. And one of, one of the key... Uh, learnings here from Sweden who has stayed open is that uh, uh, a lot of more people have been starting using uh, mobile payment uh, because they don't want to touch car terminals. I think uh, I, I've seen press in India that people don't want to touch cash. So I, I think the COVID situation here, post-COVID, what will happen is that you really want to do a full uh, or, or a, you, you want to have a contactless payment experience. You want to authorize everything using your own phone. And, and I, I, I really think that this would accelerate the uh, growth of mobile payments worldwide, uh, these kind of solutions that you're using your own phone for doing the uh, verification of, of the payment. I, so I, in Sweden, they talked about that the biggest growth has been with people elder, older than 65 years old. This okay. is, has been huge growth uh, they've seen. And, and, but Swish is also talking that they have uh, starting, started a lot of integration programs where big merchant chains want to start supporting Swish uh, in addition to card payments, uh, simply because the customers are asking for uh, having more, uh, why don't you support Swish? I don't want to touch the card terminal. I, I want to basically validate my payment with my own phone. So uh, we, we really would see that uh, post-COVID here, I think the mobile payments will be, take off in a big way. I think that's for Sweden, for India, but also worldwide. Quite interesting, uh, uh, Joki. Uh, and that comes to my last question, a very, very important question, uh, is about the regulations. One thing I would like you to tell us is uh, when it comes to innovation specifically, and innovation when it comes to the financial sector, regulators are always you know, protective. Uh, they are not ready to open their you know, APIs or allow banks to open their APIs to fintech companies, or they will always play a safe game. Uh, obviously, they have their own reasons, and those reasons are also important. I would like you to tell me uh, how the regulators in Sweden are treating the fintech companies, how innovative or progressive the regulators there, and how do you view or read the Indian regulator? Uh, I, I think Sweden is is a quite a deregulated society, uh, and 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 we uh, the whole the, you know the, there's been a push from EU even with I don't know if you heard of the PSD2 directive, which is a payment services directive that uh, forces everybody to open up, and and that is all for uh, to drive a sort of innovation. So that 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 is certainly. Um, 
uh, happening. Uh, th there are uh, some levels of, I guess, protect protectionism. Uh, uh, if you think of it that um, in, in India, uh, I think you were re really, uh, there was a great move to for MPCI to develop an open platform with UPI that allowed a lot of competition uh, to have, uh, uh, there, there, there will be many, many apps on that. It, Sweden has, has sort of decided to, uh, or the Swedish Banking Society have decided to put one app out on that, which sort of is, uh, uh, everything has to go through that one. Uh, they are in turn, though, very open for um, uh, allowing fintechs to collaborate with that app, but it's uh, it's very central centralized with, with around that one. But but I, I I believe that if I look at an aspect which innovation drives and competition drives, I think it's the openness of India with UPI, uh, the the pricing the uh, you you know the pricing you have in your market, uh, the transaction fees for merchants for uh, UPI payments are zero uh, today. There is sort of no transaction fees. Whereas in Sweden, there is, um, I think there 15 cents, US cents, is charged per transactions for uh, Swiss payments, which is a huge difference. So th that, uh, I think that wouldn't be able to hold, hold that up unless there were sort of a, almost like a monopoly situation. Uh, whereas the openness that you've had in India, I think is is helping your economy by allowing this drive of um, uh, mobile payments to, to thrive and uh, to have a lot of innovative players coming into your market and, uh, and driving it from many, many different uh, angles and many different markets. So I, I, I applaud actually the Indian market for its, uh, its openness on, and how it's, how it's working. And, and for us, as also a, like a startup or a tech company coming in, uh, it, it's been great actually uh, working and, and trying to help uh, the Indian market because I think I think everybody is sort of agreeing on that, that the big competition in India is cash. You, you, everybody wants to uh, go digital. There's a big digital drive, and uh, so there is a lot of collaboration going. And, and the government is behind the MPCI. MPCI is behind it. Everybody wants to go digital, and uh, uh, that is is a very very uh, good environment to foster innovation. And I think you, your regulators are doing a great job there. In in Sweden, it's um, I think Swish, given that they are open for collaboration, it's from that level. It's not the regulator level, but it's from the Swish level that uh, we, we, we see sort of openness uh, for mobile payments being spread out. They're doing a good job uh, on that, but, but it's, it's on one level down from the actual the regulators. I, I, I can mention an, an interesting aspect that, that we will touch on our, in our next webinar uh, that we're planning in two months is that because cash is getting so low in Sweden, we're less than 10% now. Um, this is becoming a problem of the whole society becoming more vulnerable. Okay. Uh, because what if we have a big power failure? What if, you know, there are these scenarios where, what, what if Swish goes down uh, for, uh, you, you don't have an alternative. Um, so the, the Swedish Central Bank is, is issuing, a, uh, a digital currency initiative that right now the Swedish banks are guaranteeing cash, but in the future they are planning to, they are considering guaranteeing digital cash instead. Uh, so digital e-currency that the central bank is, is sort of uh, uh, putting out in the market. And um, that is an interesting initiative that I think will will i think start touching india soon as well uh, of an interest of uh, that you have a uh, central bank guaranteed currency which is not physical cash but it's actually digital cash and and that is something which is driven by our regulators in in sweden that they are that they need to take these steps it, because cash is uh, be, uh, becoming so uh, so low and you need something in that payment situation uh, that is secure by making that transaction possible, even if you have don't have uh, internet connection. So okay. we, we are working, that's, and that's why we're gonna have the next webinar focused on the uh, e-currency uh, environment. Right, uh, Joachim, that was uh, really helpful and uh, it was uh, really helpful in terms of understanding how the Swedish market is and 
your agenda behind coming to India and your views specifically on the Indian fintech market. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chukim, for sharing those excellent insights, and thank you so much for talking to ETBFSI.